Let's talk about the x-intercept, what it is, why we use it, and how to go about finding it, right? X-intercept is really just a fancy term to say, here, look, I have a curve going to cross x-axis. Where are those points crossing the x-axis? That's all x-intercept is. It's just a fancy term. Now, more importantly, more interestingly, I think, is why on earth do we need it? Okay, now, this is a football Super Bowl season. Let's talk about one real-life application. It's amazing to see those quarterbacks be able to throw a ball in the air, and you have this receiver running like crazy, dodging at the same time, and catch it in the air. So basically, the curve itself can be found mathematically, as boring as it sounds, can be found using the parabola upside down one none, nonetheless and we can calculate also the height of this throw the quarterback has and how long it stays in there and what time is the height maximum height reached now given all the math involved it is absolutely to me mind-boggling how those football quarterbacks and receivers can figure out how far the throw and at what time under such pressure when tackles and try to just jam down you and, you know, take the ball away from you. Nonetheless, back to the math. How we go about finding it? Well, this is the tedious part. Nonetheless, there's a variety of tools. As I said before, x-intercept, it's a simple curve. We're looking for where it cross x-axis. And what do you know when the curve cross y-axis is called y-intercept? Not much surprise there. The vertex is the lowest part or the highest part if the curve happened to be turned upside down. Uh, of course, to graph this curve, we can do a point by point, but boy, wouldn't that be tedious, okay? And then we can factor it. I'm sure you've learned that by now. Or this long, tedious quadratic equation, x equal to minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Or we can use complete square. I know a lot of students, I don't know about you out there, uh, do not like this complete square. It's almost a four-letter word to them. Um, hopefully by end of this session, you'll have a little bit better idea. But let's, uh, let's go on to an example. I really firmly believe the best way to learn any concept is through example. You Take a look at how the concepts are used. Here I'm asked to find x-intercept for a very simple, straightforward quadratic equation. Now before we get on, let's talk about this quadratic and let's have some idea what it looks like. Since the coefficient in front of x squared is positive, that means it curves up. So if you were to stand up off your chair and have your arm facing upward but to touch top of your head, that's what this curve looks like. That's called concave up. It's just a mathematician's funny, fancy way to say the curve goes upward. All right? Of course, if the coefficient is negative, then you'd be drooping downward. Okay? Curves up, and it's a second order. It means it's not a line. It's a curve. So here's I have a simple curve. Since x intercept, as we said earlier, it's just a fancy way to say, well, where does it cross x axis? That's all they're saying. So, of course, I'm going to use the most uh, boring method there is. I'm not going to factor it. I'm not going to try to do anything fancy yet. I'm just going to go on out there and plug it back in. So, my coefficient in front of x squared is 1. My coefficient in front of x is minus 2. And constant is 8. It couldn't get any easier from here onward. I'm just going to plug it in. Okay. Now, here is where the trick comes in, because I found this one on the test from one of my students. The teacher put on there, of course, with a little trick in mind to see, can I trick you this, can I trick you this, or not. But hopefully after this one, he or she won't be able to trick you. Now, notice inside the quadratic equation, I have a 4 minus 32. As you know, 4 minus 32 less than 0, so inside quadratic such number is not a real number. Mathematicians don't have any more words. They call it imaginary. What on earth does that mean in my curve? You know, how does imaginary come in the picture? What really happens in the curve when you have an imaginary, that's 
really just a fancy way to say, look, the curve does not cross axis. Nothing special, nothing tricky. It's just mathematician to say, you know what? It's an imaginary crossing. It's not going to cross axis. That's all it's saying. All right. So our curve, uh, the test exam does not cross x axis. So on the test exam, you can see it does not cross. It does not have x intercepts. That was the perfect answer, and that was the trick. All right. Now for those of you out there wants to know, hey, what about this special point? What about y intercept? Since we know there's no x intercept, well, since I can't have any x intercept, maybe I can find at least one interesting point on this curve. How about a y intercept? Now notice every point on the y axis, the x coordinate is zero. So if I had been asking for a bonus point to say, hey, since there's you figured out you're so smart there's no x intercept can you help me figure out where the y intercept is and then to get this bonus points what you see is well in order to find my y intercept all i have to do is substitute x e to into the zero into this equation you gave me and i see that y is equal to eight so the curve where it cross y axis is at x equal to zero y equal to eight now, had my student put this on the test, she would have passed it. But, well, anyway, long story short, now she knows that next time on the final, she's not going to let this one tip her over. All right. Push on forward a little bit. For those of you out there really, really curious, what about that extra bonus point? Can you tell me where the vertex of this curve is? Now, this one, bearing in mind, for those of you who have the patience for the next two or three minutes, it is a little more involved. If you get somewhere, get stuck, there's another video I made specifically talk about the completing score. Remember on the first few seconds, we're on the beginning of this tip, we talked about completing score. It's kind of a little messy, a little bit tricky. Um, you just have to kind of take it out of faith a little bit. But steer with me. If you have the two, three minutes, let's see if we can crack this thing called a completing square. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to express this term that they gave us. Okay, I'm going to express it into something a little bit different. You'll see in a minute why I want to do this. Okay, I want to add a term, and since I have to keep it equal, if I borrow something, I better keep it back. Therefore, you, you see on your screen right now, you have a purple or blue, I don't know, whichever color shows up, a square, and then I subtracted it right away. The reason I want to put a square there and dis subtract it right away is I don't want to disturb that balance. If I add something there, I got to take it away. The reason I want to take this magic number to add it in there is because if I can have a three term to form what they call a complete square, which I'll describe on the right-hand side in a minute, I can find my vertex a lot easier. Okay, now let's talk about this complete square. Basically, I'm saying x squared minus 2x. Oh, I missed the square there. Pardon me. Um, I want to add something and so that I can transform it into a weird x plus a bird or a symbol. And the reason I want to do this will come clear, but for now, let's take a look on the left hand side, right hand side. What if I open up the symbol? Okay, I'm just going to do a simple foil and I'm going to gather my like terms. And for those of you who know the answer already, bear with me. Let me get through this math part. Okay, so on the right hand side, if I were to open this up, I'll end up with x squared minus 2 times this weird symbol, look like a bird, times x, and then plus this weird symbol squared. The reason I want to do that is I want to use that form and compare it to my form of x squared minus 2x plus this weird symbol. Let's see if I can, oh, there, I put a square back there. Now, my first term match, voila. The second term, I'm going to take the q, or clue, to say minus x for the minus x equal to minus 2 times this weird symbol times x, my symbol has to 
equal to 1, right? Just bear with me for a little while. If my symbol equal to 1, then that magic number I'm looking for, the question mark in the square, has to be the symbol squared. Okay, so I have 1 here for my case. Phew. Okay, so basically I'm saying, look, if I want to transform x squared minus 2x plus this magic number into a complete x minus bird, I can parenthesize it together and square it. That magic number has to equal to 1. Okay, now bear with me. Let's take that magic 1 and put it on our left-hand side. If I were to put it 1 inside that symbol, once again, I have to subtract it 1, but the first three terms gets to be so cozy that they can form inside what they call complete square. Okay, so a complete square, all they're saying, look, can you go find that magic term so that my first two terms add with this magic number can be expressed in an equivalent form of a different form. If you can find that number, you're already completed square. Now, why on earth do we do this much work just to find one number? And, you know, for this case, it happened to be one. It seems to be such work. Well, if you can get into that form, and now notice this form. If x equal to 1 in this form, you notice how the square term just kind of magically disappears. The reason I want to make that square term equal to 0 is because that term, because it's squared, it's always positive. There's nothing I can do to make it any less than 0. So if I make it a 0, then my y becomes 0 plus 7. And that becomes the lowest point on the curve. Okay. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, look up another video I made just on a complete square form. Um, but bring back to this picture. When x equal to 1, y equal to 7 is where my lowest poor point on the, on the curve. Thus, it's my vertex. So given that point... Now I have my curve completely defined. I have a 1 and 7 as a vertex, and 0 and 8 concave up. There's my curve. x squared minus 2x plus 8. Of course, you can always do point by point, but wouldn't that be a lot of work? Okay. So this term, if you were to drive in a different form, it's x minus 1, parenthesis squared plus 7. All right, I hope this is not too uh, tedious for you and um, once you can rewind a couple times see if that makes sense like i said if it doesn't look up that completing square video all right hope this one helps hi this is dr pan recording from tucson arizona please share or comment on this video together we can make math easy again